Hi everyone, my name's Chris. I'm from San Francisco. Ollie flew me out first class, so thank you, Ollie. Um, so this talk is geared towards you guys in particular, right? Like, you love coding with Meteor. MongoDB happens to be the database that Meteor uses. You're like, what the hell is MongoDB? We do MongoDB hosting, so we commonly see developers with questions about MongoDB. So if you're working on a Meteor app, you build the next Facebook, all of a sudden your database isn't scaling, you're probably gonna be wondering what's going on. So this talk is really quickly about running MongoDB in production. So what we've seen is there's a, there's a strong negative correlation between database happiness and developer fun. Developers like to hit APIs, push it to the limit, and see what happens. Um, the database doesn't like that. The, da the database likes planning, good data modeling, good indexes, um, not going crazy. Um, but it doesn't need to be this way. As long as you think about the database somewhat after you're done doing bas basic functionality. So we'll use uh, House Stark as an example. I hope you guys like Sean Bean. A um, few references to Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings in here. Um, it starts with the data model. So for the SQLers in, in this room, you'll grow to love MongoDB, I think, I hope, I, I, I wish, hopefully. Um, so this is how you're used to doing things in SQL, right? Everything's normalized. Um, you have one table pointing to another table. And then you're introduced to arrays in MongoDB and you're like, what a, how did this happen? Like, what are arrays? So here we have an example of complete normalization on the left, slight denormalization on the right. So it's a trade-off. How much information do you want to store in these arrays? Um, what are the total normalization trade-offs? Well, if you have an, um, an array within your document and all you store are object IDs, which are essentially pointers to other tables, um, this is what you get. Here's Ned Stark. This is what you can expose to the user in one query, right? And then if you want partial denormalization, so now you can store his you know, relatives' names and their, their uh, pictures, this is what you can expose in the UI with just one query. So there's trade-offs between you know, normalization and partial, denormal, partial denormalization, and it's something to think about. Um, the big rules on arrays is high reads, low updates, and writes. If you're constantly updating and writing to arrays, it's going to move a lot on your physical disk, which is very taxing to the system. Um, hopefully, the array is bound in, in size. So if you're making a social application and you're trying to map followers to each other, um, depending on how frequently followers change and how many followers a user can get, um, you might want to map it in something that's not an array. And finally, you don't want to access the embedded items directly. You kind of want to make everything a first class um, just to find on a, certain on a simple field. Um, it makes things a lot faster. Um, the, the biggest reason for slow databases that we see is lack of indexes. Developers just kind of like to push data to the database, start querying, and it's fine at small scale. Once you get into production, it's a shit show. Um, Cursor Explain tells us you know, what indexes we're using. So the highlighted fields are very important. At the very bottom, no basic cursor. No, absolutely not. You need to make sure your queries are indexed. If you see basic cursor, that means you're doing something wrong. N means the number of documents that are returned from your query. N scan is how many documents need to be scanned. So ideally, if you have the right indexes in place, N versus N scan should be very small. If it's very big, you're also doing something wrong. Finally, scan in order, that's more for arrays. If you query something and you need to sort it, scan in order means you're sorting in memory, which is also very taxing on the system. Finally, slow database operations. So let's say you start doing you know, unindexed queries and you know, the, the shit has hit the fan and your boss is yelling at you and saying, hey, why, why is our app so slow? How to save your database? Two things, check the MongoD, uh, MongoD logs and also check for your current ops that are running and run kill op on any queries that are taking you know, over 60 seconds. Um, there's a lot of good info in the logs. This is MongoDB 2.6 logs. Um, you can see you know, right here, this means you're using an index. Um, collection scan down there means you're scanning the whole collection, which means you're not using an index. Query not recording, not a very helpful log message. That means your arrays are too big or your query's too large. So chances are you want to rethink how you're issuing these queries. Um, current op tells you all the current operations that are helping running on your database. So that function down there um, is set currently to find any oper operations that are running over five seconds. As you can imagine, if you're waiting five seconds on one query, everything else is backed up. 
So you want to make sure that everything's in the milliseconds or within a couple seconds. And to, to make it easy, we also provided the, the kill op in here. You just grab the op ID, kill it, boom. We, I've, I've sat next to one of our engineers troubleshooting someone's database before, running kill op multiple times just to make sure that we could get an index build through so his queries are fast. Um, that's it. On behalf of Sean Bean and myself, thanks for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free.